obviously the biggest name on the trade block now is LeBron. Um, but before I get into LeBron, I, there was a quick update recently um, that happened 20 minutes ago, actually, uh, with the Chicago Bulls and how they're looking, they're allegedly looking to um, trade DeMar DeRozan uh, before this trade deadline. And if they don't, then they are going to allow him to walk in free agency. And this um, news came after uh, we find out the status of uh, Zach Levine, who will undergo surgery going into um, this. Will under He'll undergo season-ending surgery, which will sideline him for the rest of the season, meaning that he is not available in the trade block. So I told you the Bulls were going to hold on to them eventually, but... Um, this right now definitely changes like the Bulls and like their standings. Obviously, it doesn't seem like um, they're going to be on the winning side of the Eastern Conference. So we have to wait until next year or we have to wait to see what they can get out of DeMar DeRozan if they are successful in trading him. Now, Zach Levine sitting out, obviously that will hurt the team, but I find it very funny that he chose to have surgery right after there were rumors about him being traded to the Pistons. <laughs> he must not want to go to the Pistons. So, but anyways, on to the main story, which is going to be about LeBron James being in trade talks. Now, love him or hate him, you can't escape him. His voice is always going to be in media. You can never escape him. And this is the first time in a while, or even for his entire career from what I can remember, that LeBron has even been in trade talks. And I am absolutely, I am absolutely flabbergasted at um, LeBron being in trade talks. And hold on, there's a little bit of problem with the audio. It's really loud. Okay, there we go. So LeBron being in trade talks is obviously like it's uncharted waters. It's brand new territory. Like why? Why trade LeBron? That's the first question. He's, his name never gets brought up in trade talks. He's never requested a trade. He's never wanted to get... I mean, he's, we've obviously seen him want to get out of situations, but he never goes, like, the trade route. He never does that. He always decides to sign in free agency. He never trades. And obviously, like, my first question is, why? Why trade LeBron, and why not trade Anthony Davis? Well... The Lakers wouldn't trade Anthony Davis simply because he's younger and he tends to be more injury prone. So being able to try being able to find value from someone who's injury prone isn't all that easy. So LeBron, while he might be the oldest player in the league, still has a lot of value. So there's still a, and there's still a chance that um, the Lakers could use Anthony Davis in the future, assuming he doesn't get seriously hurt, like I mentioned before. So far, um, both of those players actually haven't been that bad with injuries recently. And these trade talks, I've, I find it kind of funny how these trade, trade talks start circulating the second the Lakers beat the Celtics at home without those two players. Like, the media was so quick to question... Um, this, the media was so quick to asking this question and making it seem like LeBron was the reason why this team was losing. And it was unbelievable. Like, it was the second that they won. They were like, oh, should LeBron get traded? And I'm like, what? Just because LeBron's teammates have a good game for, like, one game doesn't mean that, like, they're going to consistently perform better without him in the entire season. Like... Look at the last game that they played. They just beat the Knicks coming off of a nine-game winning streak with the help of LeBron and Anthony Davis. They might be, um, the Knicks might, like, you know, they might have an injured roster, like not having Julius Randle or OG Ananobi, but still, the Knicks have proven that they don't need Randle all that much and that they can continue to win and find other means to win. OG's defense, like, might be um, important in some in terms of getting some stops um, for the Knicks, so that they he might be a little bit more important on that side of the ball. And guess what? Like, the Lakers won, but it wasn't because of Austin Reeves or any other of the bench players. Like, they all did their part, but it was because of LeBron. He played 40 minutes, again, like, Jesus, he's the oldest player in the league, and he has to play 40 minutes. And it's ridiculous how he has to play all those minutes in a single game. Not to mention the new 65-game rule, 
which he's most likely trying to stay eligible for so he can get his incentives. I totally understand how the Celtics have this like huge advantage at home, but I mean, like, come on. It is one good game from the Lakers without LeBron, and we should not, one good game from all of them should not cause us to jump to these conclusions to immediately trade him. One good game from these guys should not make us jump to that conclusions. This is, this is almost unheard of. Like, nobody would ever in their right mind say trade LeBron. In fact, LeBron's agent said himself that he wasn't going to get traded, but the rumor was obviously still circulating. So, it might, and like the, the running joke around it is that, like, we all know the joke of LeBron being a GM. His nickname is Le GM. And so, the thought of him getting traded is sort of crazy given that he is Le GM. And that is sort of the joke that the media has portrayed around him. Unless he actually wants to get traded away from L.A., I'm not sure if that trade will happen. And it's, it's just how it goes. The joke around it is that, like, he makes the lineups, he does the coaching decisions, he does it all. That's Le GM, that's Le Coach, that's LeBron, that's, that's the joke around him. And at times it seems like he really does do all these things, but obviously the organization has much more power over him and can still make that decision if they want to. So, if, and that is a very, very big if, if they do end up trading LeBron, what would be the teams willing to trade for him? What would be good fits for him? And what exactly is his value? So, let's think about this. So, I'll start with the value part, since that's always, like, really difficult to scale, especially with LeBron. It's so difficult to scale LeBron's value now in the league than it was back then. Not because he is invaluable, but because how long can he maintain this value? So, again, LeBron is the oldest player in the NBA. So, your window of winning a title is probably going to be very small. Could get smaller if he gets injury prone. So, there's, so there most likely will be picks coming in from the Lakers side to compensate for LeBron's age. But at the same time, it's LeBron. If you're giving up LeBron, you are already giving up a lot of pieces because he is LeBron. The picks should probably be going like to the Lakers, actually, because of how valuable LeBron is. And like I said, it's very, very, very difficult to, to scale LeBron's value given his age. It's also dependent on what team already has... Um, what the team already has, and their picks and their status around the league. One of the biggest teams that um, that's actually a suitor, um, ironically, is the team that he just beat, which is the Knicks. So LeBron said um, that he has considered being a Nick um, at some point in his career, and they have the pieces uh, to trade away while at the same time retaining a strong lineup to be able to compete in the top-heavy Eastern Conference. And, I mean, it's LeBron. So the minute you have LeBron on your team, you should be competing regardless. Unless you're the Lakers front office and how they've been managing LeBron. I swear to God, the Lakers front office needs to... It's has done a horrible job managing LeBron's prime and managing all the years that they've had with LeBron. Because... Three times they've missed the playoffs. That's three times too many. That is inexcusable when you have LeBron in your prime. And another thing that we mentioned how um, I mentioned how the Knicks are like in potential trade talks. It would be really funny if Julius Randle ends up being in that trade discussion and returns to his former team, like how D'Angelo Russell returns from his former team. That would be so hilarious. Um, but in my personal opinion, the Knicks, they shouldn't trade for him. I don't think the Knicks should trade for him. I mean, obviously he would be a great help, but depending on who you give up and depending on who you get, I'm not entirely sure if the Knicks should trade them. The Knicks already have a great team, and the chemistry surrounding that team and what they have going right now, I don't think that should be touched. I think that should just be left alone, and they should just keep playing basketball. They should keep trying to play their ball the way they love it, and they, and in, as a result, the winning is going to happen and it's going to continue happening. Despite the loss to Los Angeles, they have shown nothing but great basketball for once in 
in uh, like what it feels like a century and what it feels like decades the Knicks are actually good at basketball I can't believe I'm talking about um how good the Knicks actually are and that they shouldn't trade to get LeBron I, I can't believe that we we've come to a time like this not to mention that they still the Knicks still um don't have Randall or OG Ananobi so I'm not the biggest Randall fan but I'm not going to act like he doesn't bring a uh, value to the team. Nor am I going to deny that the team's chemistry with him is much greater. So when you have him on the floor, obviously your team is going to get a boost in all sorts of production. So not having him on the floor and also not having OG on the floor definitely could have contributed to losing to the Lakers. I'm not entirely sure if the Lakers would want to trade for Randall in the first place. And a couple of picks or other members in the lineup but like I did a, I recently did a trade proposal like on the 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 trade website where like you could uh filter in your own trades and see if they work and um if they wanted to get LeBron they probably also have to give up a player like Precious or Mitchell Robinson in order for them to like meet uh the criteria and whatnot in order for it to be fair for lack of a better term uh now while this trade might have gone through I still don't think the Knicks should give up that much just to have two years, two guaranteed years of LeBron James. I'm not entirely sure if that's, if that's a risk I would want to take. It's a really risky move given the chemistry that is being built around the team and the culture surrounding it. Not to mention all the media attention and all the drama that's going to come in when you are... Uh, LeBron's team because that's essentially what you become once LeBron joins your team you become LeBron's team the cameras are like they're, they're on you the most there's a lot of pressure and then they have to handle being a Nick which is even more pressure given how every single home game you play everyone is going to try to give you their a game every team tries to bring in their best night at the garden constantly playing teams um constantly playing teams that are constantly trying to like kick your ass isn't easy for the um for teams to like maintain like you're playing 100 percent every single time down the court and obviously you know that's what's expected but sometimes it's like these games like you you sometimes these games that don't necessarily mean that much some players have a little bit of breathing room or that's how they like to see it as the knicks don't get any of that and if you add lebron to that then you will not get any breathing room whatsoever. You will be open to all sorts of criticisms from media and all sorts of outlets because the lights are constantly shining on you. And granted, LeBron probably deals with all of this all the time, so maybe it is a good fit if he does go to the Knicks, given all the bright lights. But personally, I wouldn't like it, and I'd actually like to see him go back to the Cavs. And they are a great team, and they don't necessarily have to give up much to get him. Trading either away Darius Garland or Donovan Mitchell will work, and LeBron would still have a good team around the Cavs, as well as a great guard alongside him to be able to keep that offensive production going when he's sitting down. Probably even get compared to Wade and Kyrie if that does happen, just because, you know, that's what they do. That's what the media does. I feel like this trade would make a lot of people happy, a lot of Laker fans don't want LeBron, and they also get a good guard to go alongside Anthony Davis, so it's not like they wouldn't be able to compete. Their defense might fall off just a little bit, but with AD's presence in the paint, um, it would still be difficult. It would still like be difficult, or it would definitely be impactful. Pardon me, uh, for um, Anthony Davis's presence in the paint, and you know the defense might struggle on the perimeter, but. Paint defense is arguably the most important type of defense in this league right now. Depending on the other pieces, like, uh, to the team uh, that they would decide to trade between, like, either Struess, Evan Mobley, or Dean Wade, I could see this trade as a win-win. Obviously, all of this is hypothetical because I don't think the Lakers would trade LeBron. LeBron immediately makes teams a playoff team, unless you are the Lakers and their front office, as I mentioned before. Like, still can't believe what they've, how they've been wasting his, his, I wasted his time. But, but I digress. And like I, how I said, the Knicks are a competitive team. So are the Cavs. The Cavs have been winning their games without Garland. And they just got Garland back now after an injury. So 
trading him or Donovan away could potentially sour uh, the rest of the players because of the chemistry that they have. Similar to how trading away Isaiah Thomas definitely, like, gave a lot of the Celtics on the team, like, a lot of unease. Because, like, while it is a business, it's like, wow, you really traded away someone who was doing this for your franchise and all that kind of stuff. And granted, they might not be mad when they find out that they're playing with LeBron, but that might also bring more pressure onto a team like the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Knicks are a bit different because they they have to deal with the media notoriety and the intense home court. That's just the pressure of being a Nick and, you know, all the tourists that come in. That's just what ha- what it happens. But with um but the Cavs being a much less known team unless LeBron's on the team, that media attention might get in their heads. As Jared Allen said before, the lights might be too bright. So I don't think LeBron will get traded to either the Knicks or the Cavs. I don't see it happening. His agent said it won't happen. He said it won't happen. So if he says it won't happen, then it most likely won't happen unless he requests a trade, which he said he wasn't going to do. So we'll see how well the Lakers do um, going into the rest of the season with LeBron on the team. And we'll see what they can, if they can make noise. But with that, we are done with our first segment. So be sure to tune into the next segment where I talk about Doc Rivers being named the Eastern All-Stars head coach right after this short break. I will be right back. <laughs> 